Hey everyone, welcome back. You might be wondering, another Battle Network 3 video already? What more could there possibly be to say after a 2 hour long narrated playthrough? Well, believe it or not, there was still more to do in the post game, and the more I thought about it, the more it bothered me. And I get it. Waiting through a 2 hour video is just too much for a lot of people, so here's a much shorter supercut of the hardest versions of every boss navigator. They're unlocked after you complete Serenade's time trials in the secret area, which I admittedly cheesed. Each boss is waiting at a specific location with a more interesting challenge than usual. You have to fight 4 battles in a row, with 3 fights against high level viruses, and finally concluding with the big bad themselves. We're starting off easy here with Gutsman, who we find in Dex's PC. Gutsman's enemies aren't much of an issue, with a few Metors, Hardheads, and Fishies. Believe me though, the later bosses end up having some ridiculous enemies. I decided to go in with Elect Guts because I've never used it in my life and so I thought it'd be fun to give it a try. It ends up working out pretty well for us, as Gutsman moves around pretty quickly but we do have a window to quickly stun him and get a full clip of the Gatling Buster in, which does about 100 damage altogether. Not too shabby. Most of his attacks are the same as earlier, with the notable exception that his up close punch has been replaced with a normal version of his Z punch, which flies at us and can go above the cracked panels. Speaking of, he cracks panels quite a bit and leaves us stranded pretty often. The battle was basically smooth sailing right up until the end, when Gutsman gets near 500 HP and starts using Z punch. We were usually stuck on the cracked panels and didn't have enough space to maneuver around, and because he's invincible, we couldn't interrupt him out of it with our Gatling Buster like we normally do. After a few tries, I decided to switch things up and try out the Float Shoes, which I almost never used in the main run. This is a complete game changer for the Gutsman fight. It took a little bit of time to get used to the idea that I could walk on the broken panels, but once I do, the rest of the battle goes pretty easily as soon as the Z-Punch barrage ends. I'm glad they made Gutsman legitimately challenging, so I'm going to give him a B on the tier list. It required a major change in strategy, and I couldn't just go in and blindly overpower him like usual. Next up, we go to the Principal's PC and rendezvous with Flashman. If you recall, even Flashman's V3 form was a joke, but not anymore. His starter enemies are among the fastest in the game, with these bunnies that move around really quickly and stun you with zap ring, and the L-Ball just won't give us a break. There's just no time to hit most of his electric enemies. The last set of viruses here are these Elebees, which are extremely annoying because they are barely on screen. There's just no time to hit them. Electric enemies are weak to wood guts, so here's some flashback footage from before I shifted away from the filter, showing that even when I try and guess where the enemies are going to come from in order to use the wood guts charge shot, I would usually miss and I barely got one or two of the 8 hits in when I did connect. After a while, I figure that we should just wait up front and chip away with the buster, which leads to a long drawn out battle. Finally, we're at Flashman with a ton of HP lost. I thought that this would be simple, so I'll start by showing off my first fight with wood guts. I was hoping that a few well-timed charge shots would take him down, but I don't even think I had the chance to charge. I kept getting stunned by his light bulbs, which I couldn't get rid of in time. I later realized that I maybe could have tested Breakbuster on this. In our winning fight though, I realized that the key to victory was to prevent him from attacking in the first place. It seems like most of the time, he'll move around and then return to the middle row in order to execute his attack. His combination of area grab and spark arm is really painful, especially if we're already stunned. But I can basically use the Gatling Buster to prevent him from doing so, and then we're in business. I stop trying to defeat the light bulbs, and he uses area grab a few times while his light bulbs are still on my side, preventing him from being able to hit me with a spark arm. After a while, it seems like he's lost his uses of area grab, and we just need to avoid the diagonally moving lights while we proceed to Gatling Buster and interrupt all of his attacks. After a first try victory on basically every version of Flashman prior to this, we end up having to try this multiple times. A lot of the challenges was with the enemies prior, but this was a really fun fight that forced me to think hard strategically and try some new things, so Flashman gets an A. In Tamako's PC, we can fight Metal Man. The enemies include some Canadums, which are fast, some upgraded versions of yo-yos, and a yo-yo with the fan to provide some synergy. Nothing too complicated. I stick with the Light Guts for now, with the goal of stunning Metal Man and hitting him with the Gatling Buster. As you can see, his attacks are pretty much the same as the last few versions, with the Boomerang and Missiles. However, he does use his punch more frequently, and everything is much faster. 
I didn't feel like I needed a particularly unique strategy to beat him, and it took me only a couple tries to deal with the insane speed that everything is moving at. We beat Metal Man in just over 2 minutes, and I'd consider him the definition of an average boss, so we'll put him in B tier. As a quick side note, there's no Punk Omega in this game, so we won't be facing him again. I'm trying to keep things mostly in story order, so next we go to the zoo computer and fight Beastman. I go in with the Lek Guts again, since this is another fast boss that I'd like to set in place so I can get a full clip of the Gatling Buster in if possible. However, the real challenge with Beastman wasn't the boss himself, but the enemies before him. These rat enemies are ridiculous. They move so fast and they get out of your row basically all the time, making them really hard to hit with any buster shot. Their projectile attacks also block our pellets, meaning that we can't hit them consistently even when we do get in the same row as them. After several tries, we get to Beastman at 20 HP, so we're going to have to be basically perfect. As you can see, he is fast. It's really interesting though, because it feels almost like we're fighting a slightly worse version of Proto Man, given his propensity to come onto our side and use wide sword like slashes. Thankfully, his attacks are largely very easy to avoid. The answer almost all the time is to stand in the middle column and to move forward or backward. If he uses his wide sword slash, you dodge it by moving one panel forward. If he uses his diagonal attack, you dodge it by moving one panel forward. My goal was to wait at whatever panel he was just coming from and shoot him as soon as he returns. I do miss him pretty frequently, but overall, I felt like I was doing alright, since my goal was to play a little bit more defensively and avoid getting hit. I'm not carrying an undershirt in this battle, so I really can only take one hit. The battle was only a minute and a half, but it was pretty intense. I'm going to give Beastman himself a C tier though, since he had a very predictable attack pattern and went down on my second attempt without me taking any damage. Next up, in the DNN studio, we can fight Kingman Omega. His starter enemies are largely jokes, until we get to this NO Omega. This virus recovers extremely quickly when you attack it with anything, and I honestly don't think it can be defeated with just the buster only, nor can it be defeated easily by the poor chips I have in this folder. As you may be able to tell, I have not been paying attention to anything chip related, so I honestly have no idea what to do against it. I know this is against the spirit of the game, but I end up using a Game Shark code to one-hit KO it. I tried several times, and I was going to end up doing something like using a high-powered Navi chip against it anyway. I figured that you're not here to watch me fight against a random virus, you're here to watch me suffer against the hardest bosses in the game. The suffering will have to wait though, since we're not going to be doing much of that against Kingman. Based on some of the comments and feedback to the Battle Network 3 long play, I decided to change things up and stay in the front column. I ended up using a pretty similar strategy of going up and down and avoiding the pawns in night. I was planning on using Break Charge, which would have destroyed the pawns temporarily, but I forgot to equip it before going in. This time we decide to use Aqua Guts, which when fully leveled up, does 80 damage with its charge shot against Kingman, and it's honestly amazing. The battle itself though is not very different from V3. Yes, the chess pieces are faster, but we're used to the speed of things by this point. In the situations where we've missed time, we can go back to the leftmost column very temporarily to avoid a longsword from the pawns, but Kingman doesn't activate his pseudo area grab plan B attack since we don't spend a ton of time back there. After a long, but not necessarily grueling 2 minutes, we take Kingman down. I'm going to put him in the D tier, since we didn't have to change strategy at all from V1, and it just came down to faster and better execution. We did well against him even without using Break Charge. As a quick side note, you can't refight the Omega Navis after defeating them once, so I can't even go back and retry this fight with Break Charge even if I wanted to. While we're here at DNN, we can find Desert Man in the DNN van. I decide to stick with Aqua Guts here, which has a bubbler charge shot that also hits the panel behind whatever it hits, so we don't need to destroy everything on the field every time just to get one hit in. Desert Man's enemies are pretty easy, except for the return of these moles. I had to restart this fight like 20 times because they move so quickly, and I'd regularly die or be brought to really low health before the Desert Man fight. I finally get to Desert Man with just under 800 HP, but I'll take it because I really hate these moles. Just as predicted though, this boss fight is a complete change from our first one. We still need to maneuver around the sand hands, but Desert Man actually stays in place after being hit with our Aqua Guts charge shot and lingers for a couple of moments before fading away, usually allowing us to easily get another charge shot in. This is not a particularly complicated fight, but the sand hands do move very quickly. The twisters on our side are also important to make note of. I didn't pay attention to them for most of the fight, but they alone basically brought me down to below 200 HP before Desert Man was even below 1000, and I need to start being much more careful. I bring my maneuvering out to the middle column as well, and Desert Man goes down in just a minute and a half. 
He was never really a difficult boss, just an annoying one. Because the fight only got easier, he's going in the C tier. Next up, we go to the hospital computer and we can fight Plant Man Omega. I go in with Heat Guts which is super effective against him and his starter viruses. A couple of puffballs later, we're up against Plant Man. My strategy here is to make use of the flamethrower as much as possible. We do end up trading flamethrowers for needles pretty often, which is not the most sustainable strategy. I try guessing where he's going to be, but unlike V3, there's actually some consequences associated with this because of his speed. Plant Man can punish us if we miss too often. I do end up messing up a few times here and there and get caught in his vine attack, but it doesn't actually lead to anything significant. We're doing 200 damage per hit, so this battle goes pretty quickly. At the end, he has 70 HP left and we just Gatling Buster to finish him off. Plant Man's tier ranking doesn't require much thought. That's a D tier boss if I've ever seen one. In the Undernet, we find Flame Man Omega at basically the same spot we found him the first time. We go in with Aqua Guts because, you know, water puts out fire. His enemies are pretty fast, including these spikies. Even playing at my absolute best, I just don't have the reaction time to avoid some of their attacks. We take some damage, deal with another annoying mole, and go into the fight with less than ideal HP. Flame Man himself has a mammoth 2400 HP. I was really hoping that I'd be able to use the Bubbler Charge Shot since it feels like it's built for this kind of battle. We'd be able to hit Flame Man as well as the candle behind him in one go. But the candles come back so quickly in this version of the fight that I feel like I can't actually waste time waiting to charge it up. I end up instinctively resorting to the up Gatling, down Gatling strategy. Flame Man ends up hitting us several times with his flame attack that expands rows, but the battle isn't too difficult once we abandon the strategy of using our charge shot. Flame Man is another C tier. It's an easy boss that we would have been fine against with basically any form, including probably normal style. Woodguts may be the only exception since we're weak to his attacks, but I'm not about to sit around and try and find out. Next up, in order to fight Bullman, we have to go to the DNN studio in the same area we fought the first three versions. His starter enemies are boomers and hardheads, meaning that it's just a waiting game since I forgot to bring the breakbuster. I went in with heat guts just because, since Boltman didn't really feel like he needed a new strategy after V3. My idea was basically to continue punishing him with the Gatling Buster. When he shoots bowling pins at us, we can interrupt his attack easily in the middle row. When the pins come up from the ground and he starts rolling bowling pins at us, we just have to wait and punish him as he changes rows. This is easier said than done at speeds like this, however. He moves so quickly that I barely have any reaction time. Despite all of that, the battle is just a slight increase in difficulty from B3. In terms of tier, I'm going to put him at D tier. He's not as free as Plant Man, but we figured out the strategy for his prior forms and he hasn't done anything to make this that much more difficult. Similar to Flame Man, we find Drill Man Omega in the same spot that we fought version 1. His basic enemies are pretty easy, just annoying because of the fight against multiple moles once again. Once we get to Drill Man, I wanted to use the Aqua Guts Charge Shot to hit him because it would go behind his drill when he's coming at us and damage him. Unfortunately, it wouldn't take him out of his animation, meaning that we'd easily get hit. In this fight, I end up just using the Breakbuster program and the pellets to take him out, slow and steady. There really isn't much to say about this fight, I really just don't have enough commentary to last the entire footage even sped up. It was a pretty long fight, but not necessarily a hard one. Drill Man goes into the D tier easily. Next up, we're going to Hades Island to fight Proto Man Omega. I go in with a normal style considering that's how he fought V3, but as soon as we start facing his enemies, we have a problem. The first enemies we fight are the twins, who we have to delete at the same time. During my first run, I tried using the panel out strategy, but I realized that we might be better off using Aqua Guts. With the Bubbler Charge Shot, we can double delete the twins without chips, and then we move on to Proto Man. We basically approach it the exact same way as V3, except a fully leveled up Bubbler Charge Shot does 80 damage versus the normal Charge Shot's 50 damage. Practically speaking, the Bubbler Charge Shot is very similar to the normal style because it comes out very quickly and is actually superior because it does 80 damage versus the normal style's 50 with basically no trade-off in terms of lag or speed. One of the great benefits of the Bubbler Charge Shot that I figure out during this battle is that the boss doesn't have invincibility frames after the Charge Shot, so I can immediately go ahead and use the Gatling Buster right after I hit him meaning that I can get up to 150 damage during just one round of attacks. This fight is very difficult and took multiple tries, since it's still very easy to fall for one of his step stored moves, but by this point, I had spent so much time fighting both the V3 and Omega versions of Proto Man that I've got his pattern basically memorized and figured out. The execution isn't perfect as you can see, but I almost always know where he's going to be next. 
Proto Man is definitely on the border of A tier and S tier in terms of difficulty. He's harder than Flash Man, but perhaps not as hard as some of the other bosses coming up, so I'm going to leave him at A tier for now. Now we start getting to the fun stuff, the secret bosses. First up is Dark Man, who I would consider to be one of, if not the hardest V3 bosses. We find him in Secret Area 1. His first virus enemy is the Shadow, which as you may remember, we can't beat without a sword chip. Similar to the NO enemy, the run may stop here if you wanted to. But from my perspective, we've already beaten the game, so the rest of this is really just for fun. And because it's for fun, I decide to try something new and use Shadow Style, which I have never used before. With Shadow Style, we can equip the Anti-Damage Mod Tools upgrade and try using the Anti-Damage to finish off the Shadow because it does sword damage. The timing to use this however is so tight that I messed up dozens of times, and even when I hit him, I ended up taking damage by the time I got back to my panel. In the one fight that I was able to beat him using this strategy, it was followed up by another Shadow, this time with a Dominard enemy which protects it. I had done this so many times I was slowly losing my sanity and I just game sharked my way through these fights. Finally, we get to Darkman. Even after bypassing his enemies, Darkman is still an immense challenge. I tried this with the Let Guts, with and without Hub Batch, since maybe stunning him would help us deal with the dozens of things that are on our screen at the same time. But this isn't a great idea since the Let Guts is so weak. I switched back to Aqua Guts so that we can use the 80 damage charge shot, followed by our Gatling Buster to do 150-ish damage. The downside here is that we need to be really careful of his electric beam, which is already his scariest attack and would do double damage to us. In our winning battle, we start off with a ridiculous 2160 HP between using an HP plus 500 and the mod tools. My strategy here is to basically charge up and be outside of the row that Darkman is in as much as possible. Once we're charged, we want to hit and run as quickly as we can. It's not that easy though, since he moves pretty quickly and you never know when he's going to attack or not. The bats are still the most annoying part of this battle since they're so small and you have to keep track of what's going on both on your side of the field and his side of the field. I very rarely try to attack him when the bats are here and instead focus on dodging, but even when I do try, my charge shot sometimes hits the bats in front of us and doesn't make it to him. As he starts getting to low HP, I start getting much more patient, since I don't want to mess up my most successful run after basically 50 attempts. But as you can see, things are moving really quickly, and I make a mistake and get hit by his scariest attack, the electric beam. We also get hit by a bat or two, and we lose roughly 900 HP in a split second. That was really scary and I thought that the battle was over, but thankfully, we bring him down to 30 HP and I finish things off with the Gatling Buster. Darkman is still one of the hardest bosses in the game. Even with a ridiculous HP stat like that and skipping his enemies, I still need to be absolutely on top of my game to barely make it by. He easily belongs in the S tier. Moving on to Secret Area 2, we have Japan Man. His starter enemies are basically just some boomers and sorties. We go into the main fight without any changes to our loadout from Dark Man because I don't think that Japan Man really needs a dedicated strategy. We basically stay in the middle column, wait for him to come to the panel closest to us, and interrupt him with the Gatling Buster. That's pretty much the strategy for the entire first half of the battle. At half HP, he calls for backup, and this is when things get interesting. We're basically stuck in the back, and things get pretty dire pretty quickly. We don't have much time to maneuver, and we get hit by a few of his reflector attacks as well. Honestly, we just need to last until our panels recover, and we can take him down with the Gatling Buster pretty easily after that. While this was a first try victory, I'm going to put Japan Man in the B tier. The first half was barely an inconvenience, but the second half was honestly pretty difficult. I'd rate the first half as a D, and the second half as an A, putting the overall fight somewhere between a B and a C, and I'll round up to B for the sake of the tier list. Now, before we get to the final few bosses, you may notice that I skipped over a certain World 3 boss. Yes, I did skip Bubble Man intentionally, and you will soon see why. This battle was honestly the difference between me making this video and not. The enemies before him aren't really consequential. However, Bubble Man from the get-go has 1800 HP, which is 50% more than his V3 form. I went in with the Let Guts, since I thought that we'd be able to stun him, but there's so much going on that I don't even get the chance to charge. First of all, the bubbles spawn from the hole much faster. Second of all, it feels like the proportion of invincible fish missiles is much, much higher than previous versions. Third, the mines start coming out from the beginning and they take several more hits to take down. 
fourth, we used to have a hole on our side of the field that would allow us to play around the crab that Bubble Man throws, but now that doesn't work. Finally, as you can see from the overlay here, each attack does at least 200 damage. This battle took me probably 100 tries. Unlike every other fight, this felt truly impossible. I end up using the mines as area control, since they stop one panel away from you when you're in range, and I was able to step away from the blast zone and try to clear out space after this. I did my best to get a full clip of Gatling Busters in when I can, but Bubble Man moves around and evades you all the time. Do you see how fast everything is? It only gets worse when he gets below 25% HP, since he switches to Bubble Form and we have to use an additional pellet to break that, even though we can barely get any pellets out. If we stay in the same row as him for too long, his Aqua Shot Trident attack can do 300 damage. I honestly don't know what I did to win this. It was just straight perseverance, and the hours that I put into this felt like a fever dream. This is no question the hardest boss that we have faced thus far, putting it in S tier. It was so bad that it really makes me want to fight Darkman again, and that's saying something. We're back to the secret area and off to the final set of bosses here. Next up, we have Serenade, who we fight in the same place as before. His starter enemies are Scuttles, which have auras, and Alpha Bugs, which auto heal. I tried several times, but with the Buster, I just can't do enough damage to defeat the Alpha Bugs. I end up using a Game Shark code to auto delete and get past them. Once again, I am really sorry, but I'm betting that you're here for the boss fight, so I really hope you forgive me. Speaking of, this is not an easy boss fight. Serenade has 2600 HP versus the original's 2000, and we have roughly the same strategy as before. We're using Heat Guts with the Break Charge and full weapon level ups. Serenade's moves are largely unchanged, but the big difference is that it feels like he's three times faster. It took dozens of battles to master the timing of the Saint Light projectile, which is so fast. I'm basically staring at the yellow underneath the panels, which helped me get a sense of timing. If the yellow coloring under the panels wasn't there, I honestly don't think that I'd be able to get the timing right. He uses this attack every time he moves, with the notable exception of when he comes to the leftmost middle panel to use Holy Shock. For those who haven't seen the long play video, Serenade is completely invincible to most attacks, including basically all buster attacks, except when he's using Holy Shock. This attack comes out so quickly that him not using Saint Light is my only tell that it's time to let go of the B button. There are several times, both in this fight and prior practice battles, that he was standing there and I thought he'd use Holy Shock and be vulnerable, but he wasn't because he did use Saint Light before moving there. Another wrinkle in this fight is that Holy Shock does break some panels, and that makes it just slightly more difficult to avoid his Saint Lights. This particular battle looks pretty dire, since we're at 160 HP while Serenade is still at 1000. That means we need to hit him 10 times before he hits us twice, which is pretty unlikely. I take several pauses because this is a very long battle and I am really mentally exhausted and sweating bullets from the amount of focus that this takes. This last set of Saint Lights felt like they took forever and knowing me, I felt as though I was going to choke really hard because there were so many. Finally, Serenade comes up to us to use Holy Shock and we counter him, defeating him in just over 8 minutes and 32 seconds in our winning battle. Please use that time for context when you think about just how much time I sank into this fight. In terms of tier, this battle is also an S tier. It's very different from Dark Man and Bubble Man, which overwhelm you with garbage, but instead, the battle itself is very simple. You know exactly what you're getting, and it just comes down to absolute perfect execution to get it right. It took a ton of practice, but here we are. Finally, we're back to base. He can be found in Secret Area 3, just behind where we found the Hub Batch program. His starter enemies are the scuttle enemies with auras, and they're pretty easy to deal with using Northwind. We get to base, and I like to use Elect Guts in order to stun him. As you can see, he moves incredibly quickly, so even a second of stunning could help me mentally prepare for whatever move is next. He starts off with 3000 HP, but still has a 200 HP aura. We could use the Grass Stage chip, but I choose to stick to Northwind which removes his aura. I found a few more in the Chip Trader, so we start off the battle with 4. A few things to note as well. Someone mentioned in the comments of the long play that I could use Set Green, which is a Navicus program that effectively uses Grass Stage at the beginning of the turn, allowing me to use the Heat Gust Charge Shot to remove his aura without using a battle chip. Unfortunately though, Set Green can only be earned through leveling up the ground style, which we can't access in this version of the game. 
The only way to access it is via trade, since we can buy set metal and set sand in this game. We can't even use the mod tools to get set green to work either. Anyway, back to base. There are a few notable changes to his moves. His normal buster that shoots only in the row that he's in is gone, and is instead replaced by something in between that and his normal electric rush attack. This version of his electric rush, which I think is called explosion, is slightly easier to avoid than the prior version, is shorter, and affects fewer rows, from what I could tell. He also uses the shooting claw, where he comes up to us and summons Gospel's head to use the fire breath. It is extremely important to interrupt this attack, because if you don't, the aura will come right back after this. I basically use the Gatling Buster to interrupt his attacks as often as I can, as well as I use the add function in the custom gauge to get as many Northwinds available as soon as possible just in case. I can almost never get the Elect Guts charge shot off, with the exception of when he uses the Shooting Claw. At 730 HP, Base switches things up and uses an attack which completely breaks our panels, making it impossible for us to hit him without taking damage. This means that he's able to get his aura up again, and we use Northwind again. He uses his Shooting Claw attack in such a position that we'd have to make contact with him and take damage, but I know that if we don't interrupt him, he's going to get the aura back up again, and we don't have another Northwind chip ready. It's a worthwhile trade-off though, and we go back to using the Gatling Buster to interrupt him. He uses Earthbreaker, after which his aura returns, and we have our two remaining Northwinds available while he has 420 HP remaining. After this, the battle is more of the same. He uses one final Shooting Claw, and we get a full clip of Gatling Buster in to beat Base Omega in nearly 2.5 minutes. In terms of tier, I would put Base at S tier. He's not as hard as Serenade, Bubble Man, or Dark Man, but he is definitely way harder than Proto Man. The combination of the aura and the sheer damage that he can do is frightening, and I am glad that that's over. With that, we've beaten all of the traditional boss navvies. The one remaining Omega is the final boss, Alpha Omega. Now that we've beaten all the navvies, we should have all the stars that we need to face Alpha- Wait, wait, wait a minute. Where's our red star? It's supposed to be right here. It took me a while to figure this out, but apparently, Miss Man Omega is actually also in this game, because you can't trade Giga Chips and that's how you get a full library. Who knew? So we'll be going back to the area we fought Bullman and head to the other side of the room to fight Mistman. His starter enemies are a bunch of puffballs, and we have to take a little bit of damage to beat them buster only because of a fan in the back. Thankfully they're quite easy, since I need a lot of tries to learn Mistman's attack pattern, fighting him for the first time against his Omega form. There's a lamp and a genie, but only the lamp can be attacked. The first fight, I didn't know what to expect so I went in with the Light Guts, hoping to stun him and get some Gatling Buster in. He'll switch rows, bring out the genie, and if you're in the same row, the genie will rush at you. After a few cycles of this, he uses an attack called Poison Mist that spreads some clouds on your side of the field, any of which Mistman's genie can come out from and punch you like Gutsman. Believe it or not, this is a pretty easy attack to manipulate since you'll almost always have a few panels to maneuver between. I was able to use the Zappering Charge Shot to stun the lamp here and get some Gatling Buster shots in. After several battles, I was able to get him to low HP before he changed up his pattern and used an attack called Soul Gang, where two shadows jump on our side of the field and chase us. They do a ton of damage, stun us temporarily, and make it very difficult to move. It's really hard to describe the effect, but we're basically stuck in place for a lot of the time. Mistman continues attacking as normal, which means that we're sitting ducks. This was a major battle ender. I don't know why I didn't think of this sooner, but I go back to the Aqua Guts to use the Bubbler. When the Genie is in front of the lamp, we can't get any damage in, but with the Bubbler's reach, we can hit the lamp every time. This makes the early part of the fight infinitely easier, and I was able to get him to low HP with close to no hits taken several times. That's important, because as soon as he uses Soul Gang, all hell breaks loose. I'm trying to avoid the shadows, charge my buster, and avoid the rush attack. I could have tried super armor, but I was going through so many different iterations of the Navica slowdown that I didn't know what did or didn't work. I got so close several times, like this one where I was a single charge shot away. In the winning battle, I switched to a pellet only strategy as soon as Soul Gang appeared. I just tried moving around randomly and hoping that I would be able to get enough Gatling Busters in. We're almost definitely getting hit by the genie, but we have room for a few pellets to hit the lamp afterwards and we win with 1 HP remaining thanks to Undershirt. This battle is definitely an A tier. Even though the first 75-80% to of the battle was super easy, I had no answers for Soul Gang and really only won because of pure luck.
Now that we're actually done with all of the enemies, we can go back to Wily's fortress and fight Alpha Omega. First we fight Base, who is a joke compared to his Omega counterpart. However, this does mean that we will need to revert back to Heat Guts and dedicate some space in our Navicus to two weapon level ups. Alpha, on the other hand, is definitely not a joke. He has 3000 HP now, as opposed to 2000 in the original story, but the real threat is the amount of damage that he does. I try going in with the exact same strategy as before, maximizing my HP while keeping the weapon level ups and the buster max, as well as this time adding the HP plus 700 mod tools code. I'm consistently able to get him to about 500-ish HP, but he uses this laser attack that does a ton of damage and covers the middle of his body, making it impossible for us to hit him with pellets. We die to this a number of times. I realized that we need to go even further in terms of HP in order to tank Alpha's attacks, so it's time to bring out the highest HP mod tools code in the game, HP plus 1000. This does leave poison swamp panels underneath us, but that's a small price to pay considering we won't be doing much moving. I go in with 2460 HP, but it's still not enough because of the laser arm attack. Because he initiates the attack at different HPs, I have a feeling that there's some RNG involved, so I keep trying this battle again and again. A couple more tries in, I get a run where we go in and he doesn't actually summon the laser arm at all. I'm not sure why this is, but we're able to just keep going and pellet our way through Alpha Omega's core until we defeat the final Omega boss in the game. I was really hoping that this was going to be a short video, but there are 17 Omega level bosses in the game, and some of them are harder than others. Thanks again for sticking with me, and I hope that you leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more. Now, it's time for me to finally put down Battle Network 3 Blue version for a little bit, but rest assured, I'll be back with more Battle Network content soon, especially with the Legacy Collection coming out in just about a month. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.